Are you a songwriter? Are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Sorrento. Thank you for tuning in, and welcome back to The Songwriter Show, right here on Reality Radio 101. I'm your host, Sorrentos. I'm a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words are so important to me, and that's why I'm thrilled to host this show for you every single Tuesday evening. I believe in my heart that every song is a story. Tonight's guest is The Word 66. They're a hard rock metal band from Las Vegas, Nevada. Technically, they're a Christian band spreading messages of love and hope, but if you did not know this fact, you may not notice as they rock the house like some of your favorite bands. Their music has been well-received by Christians and non-Christians, with several of their songs charting all over the world. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Welcome to the show. Steve, how are you doing tonight? Hey, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome, man. I I think of Las Vegas. I've been there, obviously, several times. Love it. I cannot stay there more than three, four days at a time. (laughs) Tell me a little bit about what it's like for you guys to have that home in regards to your music, the fans. You know, what's that experience like? You know, we love it out here, actually. And there is definitely that stigma about Las Vegas, you know, that whatever happens here stays here kind of thing. But we we are here to kind of combat that little thing and, and, and try to make it more wholesome if we can. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me a little bit about when did you start playing music and what's your instrument of torture? Oh, man, I, I'm the guitarist. And ever since I was probably about... I don't know, about seven years old, that's all I ever wanted to do. The first instrument that I ever played was actually the trumpet. And my parents gave me a choice of a trumpet or a clarinet. Okay. So (laughs) I went with the trumpet because it it seemed like a cooler instrument. And eventually I saved up enough birthday money and uh, Christmas money to be able to buy a guitar. Okay. And tell us a little bit about your family growing up. Did they encourage you? Did they discourage you? What was that like? I grew up without any religion whatsoever. I would have to say, if I'm going to be totally honest, my parents were not very, very supportive okay. of, of anything. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a long story, man. <laughs> I hear you, man. We're tortured musicians. We all have some crap in our background. You know, that's just how it goes. Oh, big time. I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> You'd be surprised how often people tell me that, yeah, you know, you always hear about the stories of people that supported them, but the majority don't. The majority, oh, my family thought I was an idiot for pursuing music, and they blacklisted me, and they just... Right, yeah. To me, I feel like that's the saddest thing in the world, because if you're just wanting to make art, whether it's music, drawing, poetry, writing books, whatever it is, how can you fault someone for that? I, I have never understood that. Everybody does something different, you know. Everybody was was born to do certain things, you know. I believe that we all have a purpose in life, and that's what makes up a world besides, you know. I mean, everybody, if we all did the same thing, then it wouldn't be much of a world, right? I mean, so everybody has certain talents that they need to pursue. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think you're totally right. What was the first tune you learned on the guitar? Probably uh, the one that everybody does, 25 or 6 to 4. (laughs) <laughs> okay do 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 yeah it's really simple and it's really cool okay tell us a little bit about the rest of your musicians your band how do you guys get along do you guys known each other long how long have you guys been together well it was probably about 2018 that uh, for me i basically i, I was out of uh, music uh, and religion for a really long time and then i had this little incident that happened in my life and it basically told me that this was my purpose and this is what i was supposed to do so it was probably about tw- uh, the end of 2018 that i was called i believe to do this project so that's basically when i started to meet the other band members um I actually put an ad out in craigslist <laughs> actually the, and that's how i found the drummer and then eventually we found our vocalist brian as well i'll tell you what i've tried several times man good luck to you but i i've tried craigslist i've tried band mix i've tried all these things it is the hardest thing in the world when you didn't grow up with a bunch of buddies and you've known each other forever to get a band going man 
it's unbelievable. And the, the amount of flakes out there is just incredible. And, and it's like you put an ad out there, too, and, and, you, and you try to make it as serious as possible. And you say, OK, you know, this is a sign band. You know, we're looking for this or we're looking for that. And please respond appropriately. You know, send some pictures, send some samples of your work. Tell us what, kind, you know, what you've done in the past. You know, tell us about your equipment. And they'll answer it and go, hey, man, I saw your ad. I think I'm interested. Yeah. And you go like, oh, my God, it's like a race. <laughs> yeah, it's and you know, I like you, you just want to find someone who's a fit and I don't want to waste anyone's time either. So it's like, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm doing. And, you know, it's like hiring staff, man. They just don't listen. They just it's all about them. And you're just like, wow, this is torture. It really is. And when you're even even more so when you're in the hard rock vein, it's it's kind of a certain personality a lot of times that you're dealing with. Yeah. And being that we're a Christian band, you know, we really need to find members that will represent being Christians and acting properly. And that's another challenge for us as well. Yeah, absolutely. How? Tell us a little bit about that challenge. Do people not take you seriously? Do they take you too seriously, you know, specifically your fans? I mean, how do you juggle that? That must be tough. I think, I think it's a little bit of both. So as far as, you know, I've done a, a ton of promoting for the band. So especially during COVID, you know, I mean, there was nothing to do. So uh, and you were stuck at home and I'm a single guy, you know, so basically I was literally spending 10 to 12 hours a day promoting the music, doing a lot of research and sending stuff out to radio stations and magazines and all kinds of stuff. It's my belief, luckily, you know, being that this is pretty much guided by the Holy Spirit, pretty much. I mean, so uh, we got an amazing response right away. But I do believe that there's probably a ton of people and a ton of radio stations that when they see you're a Christian band, I mean, they just probably delete you yeah. immediately. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I think that's that's sad because I think there's a lot of cool Christian songs out there and people that have a message. And there's nothing wrong with having a niche. I mean, I think those are the most successful bands, to be honest with you, as opposed to trying to please everybody. Yeah. And, and I think uh, the other thing is, too, that people really don't understand, like we're a Christian hard rock metal band. So it's like so if you listen to our tracks and if someone doesn't tell you we're a Christian band and we've heard this many times before where people say, man, I really dug your music and I did not know you were a Christian band until I read your bio. Yeah. You know, because we rock like everybody else does. The only thing is, is that we always have a positive message. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your process. How do you guys write a song? Do you start with a guitar lick? Do you start with melody, groove? What, what's the process like for you? Again, to be honest with you, I pretty much write all the music and the lyrics. So it's kind of like uh, a lot of times when I'm just messing with my guitar, you know, I just play a, a riff. It just comes out of my head or it's guided into my head or whatever. It just happens from there. And I go like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And then grab a, a pad and a paper <laughs> yeah. and just start writing down some lyrics. There's a lot of times, too, where I'm really not in writing mode at that time. You know, so basically I'll just pull out my cell phone and just record the riff because there's no way you're going to remember that riff later on. So I, I save that for later. And then basically when I, when I get together with the guys, I, I just say, okay, I, I, I got this new track or whatever, so let's, let's check it out. This is what I've got. And I kind of also have the, the other instruments in my head as well. So I kind of know how things should be played, and I kind of just convey that to the other guys and say, okay, hey, man, you know, I'm thinking the drums should go like this, and I'm thinking the bass should go like this, you know, and the vocals kind of like this. And then we just kind of mess around with it a little bit and kind of fine-tune it. Okay. How often do you guys practice as a band? you do it regularly, or do you just do it whenever you feel like it? Yeah, I mean, uh, probably like a couple times a week. Okay. Not that often. How do you guys decide what song is going to make it to the public versus you're just going to scrap it? It's ones that we really like, ones that we feel that would be well received. Most of the times when I, uh, I bring tracks for us to start working on, I say, okay, you know, these are the ones that I think are going to be the best to record and get out there. So we'll go with those. And then, like I said, then I'll, you know, introduce some other things too. And then we'll, we'll kind of mess around with them a little bit and, 
and we'll figure out which ones we think are best. Okay. We got a ton of tracks, man. I mean, we, we, we love being in the studio. We'd love to get back in and, and record a lot more songs. Yeah, that's cool. Tell us a little bit about what you guys got happening in the next year or so. What, uh, any surprises for the fans? Anything you guys are looking forward to? Well, we got this new EP. The, the new album is, is called Rock and Roll Preaching. It's going to be an EP. There's going to be five tracks on there. There's a couple of them that have already been released before the record. We also have a ballad on there which is uh, really beautiful. It's called uh, How Will I Know? And it's basically about a single person or a single guy wondering when God is going to send them that special person or that Eve, if you will. Yeah. So we got that hopefully by the end of August, September, somewhere around there, that should come out. We kind of wanted to record also a Christmas track, and I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. Okay. And we don't know if it's going to be an original or if it's going to be, a, you know, really cool cover, rock it out kind of thing. So we're still working on that as well. We're definitely going to be out touring, hopefully in the fall. Right now we are a three-piece band. We've always been a three-piece, but we're going to be adding a fourth. So we'll be out as a four-piece. Four we're hoping to do a, a good amount of, of playing out there. We're really hoping also that we've, uh, we've established a really good following in like Brazil and the UK and Germany and uh, Sweden. So uh, we're hoping to get out there as well. Yeah. Okay. Tell us a little bit about this song we're going to hear. It's called Tonight is the Night. And it is probably our heaviest track that we've released so far. It's basically, it deals with addictions and struggles. It basically, the, the moral of the story is that it's never too late to change. So whatever you're going through right now and whatever's happening, it's just, just a, a good reference to let you know that, again, that it's whatever you think you've done or whatever it is that you want to do or whatever, it's just, it, it just lets you know that it's never too late to change. Um, I'd also like to mention, it, it's very cool that we have Danny Miranda, who has been on tour with Queen and has been in Blue Oyster Cult for many years, is actually on our new EP as well. Okay, that's cool. All right, I'll tell you what, let's take a listen to the song, then we'll come back and talk a little more, okay? Sounds great, thank you. Awesome, all right, everybody, check this out. Here we go.
That was a really cool song, dude. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thanks for playing it. Ah, no problem. So tell us, what is your favorite 80s jam? I would have to say I I have a huge collection of vinyl that I don't play because I, I don't have a, <laughs> a turntable anymore. It's in boxes, basically, and there's a ton of of vinyl in there and a lot of 80s stuff in there and a lot of of course being a a metal person so there's a ton of pretty obscure metal stuff in there so i was a big uh, dokken fan i was really into michael shanker i was into bands like tesla and rat and and loudness of course i'm a huge priest fan or was a huge priest fan anyway yeah i mean that that was kind of uh uh, a lot of stuff that I listen to. Okay. Is there something, if you could give some advice to somebody just starting in this genre, what would it be? It's persistence. You got to hang in there. It's not easy, especially these days. There are billions, <laughs> probably, of bands that are out there now. So you're competing with all these other bands. So even with us, we're semi-established a little bit. So for instance, when we send our music to a lot of these radio stations, and we've already have an established relationship, a lot of times I believe that the music doesn't even get seen because it's kind of in there with everybody else's email. So there's there could be hundreds of bands sending stuff to, let's say, a radio station that day. And there's just so much stuff that they can go through or the amount of time it takes for them to go through it. So so just to let you know, so you've really got to stand out there and make sure when you send your material that it represents you well. Yeah. Everybody's got Pro Tools in their uh, basement or in their bedroom or whatever. And unfortunately, a lot of times it's not great quality 
So when you're representing yourself, make sure you represent yourself with your best foot forward. When you send your stuff out, make sure it's quality. Spend that extra money, go into the studio, get it done properly. So again, when you send your stuff out, you're professional. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. All right. Tell us a little bit about your favorite person to follow, like on Instagram. You know, I've got like a million people that I follow on uh, on Instagram, but uh, it's usually people that follow me <laughs> as well. So I'm not, I, I, I got to say, I'm not really someone that that follows, you know, other other bands so much and, and like looks at everything that they do. OK, uh, I don't know if that's a bad thing to say. No, it's all right. Best career advice you ever got. We're talking earlier about family and parents and stuff. I could tell you the worst <laughs> I ever had was that sure. uh, ah, you're not going to make it. You can make it. You know how many people there are out there doing the same thing that you do? Ah, you're wasting your time. You know, so that's uh, <laughs> that's one thing. As far as the best goes, Probably uh, uh, kind of along the lines of what I said, where, you know, you've got to be persistent and you got to spend time to to master your craft. There was a point in time I always wanted to be the greatest guitarist in the world. (laughs) I'm far from it, but that was a, a goal of mine. So I remember there was this one point in time where I really dedicated myself. I, I locked myself away for a long time and I just played like for 12 hours a day. And I just had this little routine where I get up in the morning and I, I work on scales for like from eight to twelve, and then I work on hammer-ons from twelve to three, and then I work on some new music from three to six or something, and I take a, a half hour break for for dinner or lunch or something like that, and then I get back to it again, and I work on all different kinds of stuff. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yeah, it's all right, man. So listen, uh, before we let you go here, tell us where can people buy your stuff, stream it, your website, anything you want to share with the fans? Well, the website is the word 66.com. We are on all the social sites, of course. You know, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, uh, Instagram. The handle, the word 66, was taken in some of those places. So in some places, you'll find us as the word S-I-X-T-Y, S-I-X. But I think if you put in the word 66, it'll still come up. As far as where you can find our music, uh, we're on all the major platforms. You know, you can find us on your Spotify's and your Deezer and your Apple and your Amazon. And we're on Pandora as well as all those other uh, platforms as well. And of course, Bandcamp and all those kind of places. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to thank you so much for being on the show tonight. It was an absolute blast. I really appreciate you having me on. I had a great time. It was a pleasure uh, doing this interview. And I thank everybody out there for, for listening to us. And if you have a couple moments, you know, please check out our website and our socials. Please feel free to say hi and follow us. And we really appreciate it. Awesome. All right. So thank you to everyone for listening to us tonight. We both hope your own unique story gets heard around the world. My name is Sorantos. Please join me every Tuesday night to hear other amazing artists share their fascinating behind-the-scenes stories right here at the Songwriter Show on Reality Radio 101. Have a great night, everyone. I love you guys. Yeah, knockout and bulletproof And who am I to argue That DNA looks good on Every rainbow smiles down on you I can't believe you're holding my hand That you picked me to be your man There's nothing you can't do Nothing's impossible for you We're four years but only one mouth I'm always full of doubt We both miss the man I used to be to me
lost in a sea of noise Don't feel like I have a choice In the night I'm a sad boyfriend But in the day hope this will never end Your eyes always bring me back Push is gently on track Instinct. We're four ears but only one mouth I'm always full of doubt We both miss the man I used to be We both know you're not nice to me But now that I've got you I'm gonna do anything I can to keep you Anything I can to keep you Anything I can I'm just glad, glad I met you Why'd you do, why'd you do that? It's cause you can Girls that look like you Do what they wanna do Play with any man To keep the momentum going, head over to www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists, songwriters, and producers. That's www.songwritershow.com. This program was mixed and mastered by Landis Maitland-Whitelaw at landismaitlandwhitelaw.com.